Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's, uh, we're going to talk about two different kinds of sequences um, in this chapter. The first is arithmetic sequences. The second is geometric sequences. Let's start with the arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence follows a fixed pattern adding, and that's the important term right there, adding a fixed number from one term to the next. Um, you know, arithmetic is adding. That's the important part about an arithmetic sequence. I take the same number and I add it over and over and over and over and over again. If I'm adding 2 to a sequence, like for instance uh, 2, I'm adding 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, dot, 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 and that can go on forever. Um, I can actually find any term of a sequence using the formula that's on the screen right there. And you might want to pause it just for a second just to get this stuff down in your notes. But each of these variables represents something different, and you're going to be given this formula on your SOL, uh, SOL um, formula sheet. Now, you will be given the formula, and you'll be given very brief descriptions of what the variables mean, but you really have to understand what the variables mean in order to put the numbers in the right spot in the formula. A sub n, that's the nth term of the sequence. Nth term just means any term you want. If I want if I want to find term number 10, that's the 10th term. So I want a sub 10. Um, so if, let's say I want to find a sub 10. a sub 10 is the 10th term. a sub 100 is the 100th term. And that's kind of what a sub n. A, n can be any number. It's whatever number of term you're looking for. a sub 1 is going to be the first term. So just like a sub 10 is the 10th term, a sub 1 is always going to be the first term. N represents the number of terms, so if I want to go out to the hundredth term, N's going to be a hundred. I have to go out a hundred terms to find that number. And then D, D represents the common difference, and that's the number that you're adding each time. So up here, I'm adding two each time. So that would be your D. Now, the reason that I would want this is, if I want to add two, and let's say I want to find the fiftieth term, I can go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 until I get to the 50th number or I could just f use this formula and find what the 50th term is going to be. It's going to be really easy. Okay, so this is the formula you'd use if you want to find some term down the sequence. Okay, so let's find the 45th term of this sequence. So I can see here that I'm adding 4 each time. So that means that this is an arithmetic sequence because I'm adding the same number each time. Okay, so I'm going to use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Alright, so a sub n, it's the, f it's the term I'm looking for, which is the 45th term. The first term is 3. I'm looking for... Um, the 45th term, so that means n is 45, and d is 4. So now you can just plug those numbers into your calculator. So uh, you have 44 times 4, so that's 150, 176, plus 3 is 179. So 179 is the 45th term of the sequence. So if I went 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23, 27, and so on, the 45th number that I get to will be 179. A lot easier to use the formula than to just keep adding 4 45 times. Okay, let's find the 82nd term of this arithmetic sequence. How do I know it's arithmetic? Well, I'm actually adding the same number each time. Now, if you'll notice, the numbers are actually getting smaller each time. And that means that I'm adding a negative number. So I'm adding negative 9 here each time. Okay, so this is arithmetic because I'm adding each time, even though the numbers are getting smaller. All right, so I'm going to use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I want the 82nd term. So a sub 82 is what I'm looking for. a sub 1 is the first term. That's 102. I'm looking for the 82nd term, so that means I need to go out to 82 terms. That's n. And d is the number I'm adding each time, and that's negative 9. So I'm going to take uh, 82 minus 1, which is 80, times negative 9. And then I'm going to add 102 to it. So I end up with negative 627. 
So if I subtract 9 every single time or add a negative 9 82 times, the 82nd number is going to be, uh, I guess I would add it 81 times, but the 82nd term would be negative 627. Hi, so let's find the 29th term of this sequence. I'm given a couple bits of information, and I'm not really even given the the sequence itself, but I could create the sequence from what I'm given, but it's absolutely actually not necessary. Um, but just so you can see, um, I can create the first term. That's 14, because that's given to me. And D is 6. That means I'm adding 6 each time. So the second term would be 20, then 26, then 32, and so on. Um, but I really don't even either need, to, need to do that because I have enough information as it is. So I want to find the 29th term of the sequence. So I want to find a sub 29. And again, this is an arithmetic sequence because I'm adding the same number each time. So um, I'm going to use a sub 1, which is 14, plus n minus 1. So n is not given, but it's given right there. It's the 29th term of the sequence. So I want to go to the 29th term. So I need 21, 29 terms minus 1 times d. So I just take 29 minus 1 is 28 times 6, add 14 to it, and I would get 182, and 182 is the 29th term of the sequence. Hi, so before we talked about arithmetic sequences, and arithmetic sequences are sequences where you add the same number each time. These specific sequences are called geometric sequences, and they're basically the same thing, except instead of adding the same number each time, you're multiplying the same number each time. So these are multiplying, and arithmetic was adding. So it's easy to remember the difference between uh, arithmetic and geometric, because arithmetic starts with an A, add starts with an A. Very easy. Now, you might want to take a second, pause the video, just to write down the, the formula and, the, and what each of the variables represents. But essentially what it comes down to is it looks kind of the same. A sub n, you saw that before. A sub 1, you saw that before. n, you saw that before. They, bought, they all mean the same thing as they did before. The formula is a little bit different, and that's mainly because of that variable, which is r. r is what you multiply by. d is what you add each time for an arithmetic sequence. r is what you multiply by for a geometric sequence. And it's also known as the common ratio. Instead of the common difference, it's the common ratio. I want to find the 11th term of this sequence. You can tell from this sequence I'm not adding the same number each time. I'm actually multiplying by 3 each time uh, to get the next uh, term. So I'm going to use the geometric sequence formula. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers. I want to find the 11th term. So a sub 11 uh, a sub 1 is the first term, that's 2. R is what I'm multiplying by each time, that's 3. I'm going to raise it to the n minus 1 power, so that's 11 minus 1. So I'm taking 3 to the 10th power, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2. So I get 118,098. As you can see, these numbers get really big, really fast, and that's mainly because of that term right there, which is uh, an exponent. So this is an exponential function. Remember when we talked about exponential functions, those graphs look like this, and then they go really high, really fast. That's what I'm dealing with here. I'm at the really high, really fast part. So you don't have to go out very many terms. In this case, we're only going to the 11th term, and we're already talking about a big number. All right, so the, the 11th term of the sequence is 118,098. I want to find the ninth term of this sequence, and to get from 1 to negative 4, I'm multiplying by negative 4, and then to multiply by negative 4 again, negative 4 times negative 4 is um, positive 16, and then I'm multiplying by negative 4 again. So the way you can tell that you're multiplying by a negative here is see how the signs flip from one term to the next. So that means you're multiplying by a negative. So I'm going to find a sub, uh, well, let's just use the regular, or the formula here, and then we'll plug in the numbers. All right, so I want to find um, a sub n, which is a sub 9, the ninth term of the sequence. a sub 1 is 1. r is negative 4, and I need to remember to put that in parentheses. That's important. And I'm going to raise it to the n minus 1 power. So I'm going to take negative 4 and raise it to the 9 minus 1 power, which is 8. 
and then multiply it by 1, and I get 65,536. So the ninth term of this geometric sequence, and it's geometric because I'm multiplying the same number each time, is going to be 65,536. I want to find the tenth term of this sequence. It's a geometric sequence because I'm not adding something each time. I'm multiplying by the same number each time. And the difference here is, notice how the numbers are getting smaller. So in order to get from 64 to 32, I'm going to multiply by, in this case, a fraction, which is 1 half. Um, now let's say you couldn't figure out that you're multiplying by a half each time here. There's a way you can always find r, and r is always going to be the second number divided by the first number. So if you know it's not arithmetic, you can always find the, the geometric, or the r, by taking the second number divided by the first number. If you know it's arithmetic, and you want to find d, d is, instead of take, taking second divided by first, you take second minus first, and that will give you the d. And that's just in case you can't figure it out. So most of them you're going to be able to look at and know exactly what R and D are right off the bat. But in case you can't, you can always do that. All right, so I want to find uh, A sub N. And this is the formula. So A sub N is A sub 10. That's what I'm looking for. A sub 1 is 64. R is 1 half. And I'm going to raise that to the N minus 1 power. Now it might be easier when you put in a calculator to make sure 1 half is in parentheses. Or you can just say it's 0.5. So 0.5 to the 10 minus 1 power, which is the ninth power, times uh, 64. And you're going to get, in the calculator, it's 0.125. And then you can always hit math, enter, enter, to change a decimal to a fraction. So math, enter, enter. And that will change to 1 eighth. And that's the way it's going to be on your SOL test. They're not going to give you an answer of 0.125 most likely. So see how the numbers are getting smaller and smaller. 1 eighth makes sense. So the tenth term of the sequence is going to be 1 eighth.